Passion Public Service announcement. Stop going into new relationships trying to be the partner that your previous partner wanted. Passion Public Service announcement. Passionate. Passionate. So passionate. Passionate. Let me tell you something. So what is this Passion PSA podcast? Who am I? Well, they call me Passion. Short for Passion, no last necessary. Why is there no last name necessary? Because the first name says it all. I am Passion and all that that embodies. What do I do here? I give you the life coaching that you know you need, but don't enroll yourself in. When did I start? Actually, 2017. I'd leave a PSA on my Instagram regarding something I'd observed, and now we've evolved to this. Why do I do it? Why not? If even one person is able to take away one thing that changes their life, someone else's life, or changes the world for the better, then I've done what I was charged to do. So come on in, sit and listen for a while. There's something here for everyone at the Passion PSA Podcast. Greetings and salutations, my beloved passionates, newcomers, visitors, and guests. C minus 11. We are now 11 episodes away from 100. The pressure's on, but guess who ain't gonna crack? <laughs> Pardon me, I had to laugh at that. The things are thinging, y'all. The website was and still is acting crazy, but the landing page was built, and the ticket seller and ticket selling subpage is go. So praise the Lord, all ye nations. The security deposit has officially been paid. I'm spreading the word. Y'all are spreading the word. The excitement and anticipation is building, and I am so grateful to be on this journey. I think what I'm feeling needs to be talked about, like, in its own episode. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, okay, I'm glad we had that talk. Welcome to another episode and season of the Passion PSA podcast. Some of y'all may have missed the season premiere last week, hence the repeat welcome to the season. So, hey, y'all, hey. Welcome back. Where I, passion, no last necessary, your get you right guru, issue a weekly public service announcement about whatever I've observed or was on my mind. This is a for your consideration zone where the objective is to offer you a perspective you may not have previously considered to A, expand your thinking and B, aid you in becoming the best version or a better version of yourself for yourself and for others. This is a safe space but not necessarily a delicate one. I'll never rob you of your right to feel what you feel. Same way I won't sugarcoat the truth to make it more palatable. The goal is to get you to higher, more expanded thinking so that you can operate as your highest, I don't like the way this chair sounds, and best self. If you're new here, affirmations are our first order of business so that we can intentionally raise the vibration and start on one accord. Let's get on the same frequency. If you're ready, go ahead and take a deep breath. You are always welcome to repeat after me or to use this time to state your own affirmations. I am focused on now. I am open to learning. I honor my needs. I respect the needs of others. I am needed. I am wanted. I am appreciated. I am loved. I'm so grateful. It is well. I am well. All is well. Well is all. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. All right, Passionates, here we go. Part three of the series. So part one, the summer finale, we responded to the listener letter. Why is it that the love you need to let go of is the one that's the hardest for you to actually release? Part two, the season premiere was the question, are you okay with being someone's lesson? And we came to terms with the fact that we are all someone's lesson. So while we feel like somebody else worked out their stuff with us and then they went on to somebody else and showed up as an upgrade from all of our hard work, we too were a lesson for them and our growing pains were someone else's trial by fire. That's the synopsis. If you missed either of those, please go back and watch. I will have them linked in the description box. The feedback from your fellow passionists is that there is some very good insight there for you about yourself and or someone that you know. Okay, part three. I want to talk about how we're showing up to relationships. Now, in a previous episode, and I don't remember which season it was, I used the example of that thing that you did in a previous relationship being magic for your previous partner. And while it may have been pixie dust for them, it's a turn off for the next person. Passion public service announcement. Stop going into new relationships trying to be the partner that your previous partner wanted. After a breakup or when we're ready to give it another whirl, 
many of us reflect on what we've been through and what we heard either in the relationship or on the way out. On the way out is what really messes with you because it could leave you feeling like, Oh, so that's how you've been feeling all this time. Or, if it ended amicably, you're kind of left wondering. But like, if I'm so great and I'm not complaining, why are you trying to bail? Then we find ourselves in this loop of what should or could have been different and how it should have or could have been different. We're looking backwards and we're trying to walk forward. Now, I know I've said that in a couple of episodes, but it bears repeating. Is there a place for looking back? Yes. Reflection? Safety? Because the way people weird in these streets right now, you got to keep your head on a swivel and constantly look over your shoulder. If you're driving, you have to look in the rearview mirror periodically because you have to see what's behind you. Sometimes you have to look over your shoulder. Some things aren't visible just looking in the rearview mirror because they're in your blind spots. So if you don't look over your shoulder to see what's behind you, when you try to move, you could actually be cutting somebody off or you could be cutting it too close and accidentally hit someone because you just didn't see them. They weren't quite behind you. They just weren't in sight. Put a bookmark right there, Passionist, because we're going to revisit this very subject in a few episodes. It's going to be delivered a little bit differently. Okay, back to the lecture at hand. It is important to look behind you to see if there's something coming up that will preclude you from making movement or just to be aware of what's going on in back of you or to see what's approaching you in case you need to get out of the way. However, too many of us, we spend too much time looking in the rearview mirror. Too many of us are spending too much time looking over our shoulders. We're more concerned with what happened in the past than we are with what's happening in the present. So the future that you keep trying to create, better stated, the reality you keep trying to create or desire to create, you can't. Because you're still looking at something you can't undo, can't give back, can't get back, can't adjust. And because you couldn't adjust it or get it right there, you're now trying to fix it in a place, get this, where it doesn't need repair. You're trying to address old behaviors or desires in a new relationship with a new person. And while this person and that person may have a lot of similarities, this person and that person might even seem like they could be the same person. The reality is that they're not. Too often, we are going into new relationships, trying to be the partner that our previous partner wanted instead of one, finding out who is the partner that our current partner desires, and two, who is the partner that our current partner needs. Now, passion is before we start, this is where you, this is where you tap into the upliftment that our affirmations provided. Now, you may disagree, and you are welcome to disagree, but I'm speaking from logic an established fact, not emotion. That said, in part one of this series, I said that there's a difference between needing and wanting. I've heard the argument presented when someone said that they didn't need someone, they wanted them, and the person hearing this immediately jumped to correct them and said, no, you need this person. First of all, you can tell somebody what you think they need or you want, but that's right up there with should. Even if what you're saying is an astute observation, they're probably not yielding to that idea until they come to terms with it on their own. Also, what you think someone needs from the outside versus what they think they need from the inside can vary vastly and with good reason. You only know what somebody shares and we all leave our details when we get ready. My point, I believe a large part of the issue is that people get offended when they feel like they as an individual aren't needed or they feel like their value isn't recognized for all it is. So they internalize it as though it's an indictment or an accusation of them having no value and they act out. Oh, 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 okay, well, since you feel like you don't need me, then I'm going to make sure I'm not available to you on any front. I don't need you. I want you is not an affront to who you are as a person. A need is something you cannot do without. You need a liver. Whether it's a piece of a liver or a whole liver, you need a liver to live. You don't need both lungs to live. You need at least a lung or some type of artificial breathing apparatus. You don't need a pair of kidneys to stay alive, but you need at least one functioning kidney or regular dialysis. You need a heart. You need blood flowing through your blood vessels. You need blood vessels to be the passageway for the blood to traverse through the body to the necessary organs. All of these organs are necessary. The one we don't need, the appendix, because it is a vestigial organ, 
What's the best that you're working? This is one that serves no working purpose, okay? We still come as a complete package with this vestigial, out-of-date, non-functioning, non-useful, you can completely live without it organ, and still somebody might feel a way about having their appendix removed. They don't need their appendix, but they want to keep it. I'm going to say this again, passionates. Listen to this next part. Outside of your feelings. Don't go back to the last time you heard it. The goal isn't to walk you back to your trigger or start a war. Remember your affirmations. You ready? I don't need you means I'm going to still be alive, whether or not you or anyone else are in my life. It doesn't mean that you don't have value. It means you're not oxygen. It means you're not an organ. I need my organs and oxygen or I will actually physically die. I desire companionship. I desire a certain type of companionship. And perhaps I desire you as a companion. But if you stop being my companion, will I die? Not necessarily. Can other things become challenging? Possibly. And I acknowledge that. There's a possibility that some of the other things that I need to take care of or I need done may now be delayed because I don't have your hands to help. It doesn't mean that I won't ever have hands to help. Now, it is not lost on me that there are people, women and men, saying they don't need the opposite sex. Yeah, passion. Do an episode on them talk about how they could do bad by themselves, and then and then when you lead them though by themselves, now all of a sudden they realize, oh, they, now they need you. Talk about that. And I won't. Not today. Today, I told you to listen past the ex that hurt your feelings when they said that. But if they did say that, and that was their genuine feeling, that was and still is their right. Just like it's your right to climb out on a ledge, right, and get crazy every time you think about it. Because based on their experiences with you or anyone else, they may have lived a life where relationship after relationship has made them more and more turned off or embittered toward the partnership dynamic. If every relationship has failed and all roads lead back to self, then of course, self-reflection is necessary because you're either doing something right or you're doing something wrong, but you still need to figure out your part in it. And some of them haven't come to terms with that because they don't watch the Passion PSA podcast, you do. Regardless, you don't get to tell them what they need and you definitely don't get to demand that they need you or need to need you because no one else will want them. Trying to shame them into feeling unwanted or undesirable for electing non-sexual commitments, for not settling for being unequally yoked, for not settling for an unhappy relationship just to say they're in a relationship is trash. Beyond that, insisting that they need someone they don't want is more of a reflection of you needing to be needed and feeling validated through that need than them actually needing to be partnered. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Nah, passion, nah. You're not gonna leave it there like that. A lot of people, women especially, out here lying to them, they don't need no man. Well, who they calling to change the tire for them, huh? When some don't get crazy with them, they need a man then, right? Well, if we're gonna play that game, friend, they can call AAA for the flat. As, you know, if they got it, and they can call Smith & Wesson if they have a relationship with them. Nah, so you trying to be funny. I'm really not. I'm not in any way entertained by this subject. I find it draining. But I know you'll never get anyone to acquiesce to their needs being the ones you've assigned to them to sate yours. Y'all, I don't know where this chair is trying to spin me to, okay? <laughs> but it's turning me. Anyway, if you are in your feelings after that last segment, affirm with me. I am open to healthy dialogue. I am open to healthy communication. I make room for the perspectives of others as I expect room for my perspective. Deep breath, beloved. A safe space, not a delicate one. Having now established need versus want and having confirmed, yes, there are opposing positions. In order to meet someone's needs, you have to know what their needs are. You can't meet my needs serving hers. I can't meet his needs serving his. Non-intimate relationship example. I know somebody who doesn't like to work out with a personal trainer because, as they've told me, they don't need somebody speaking words of encouragement to them to motivate them. It actually irritates them, like to the point of not even discouragement, but like a total turnoff. Like they don't even want to work out anymore. I don't want to do this because you're bothering me. 
they feel like all that talking is just an unnecessary distraction that interrupts their concentration. So while this trainer may have a plethora of trainees that need to hear come on push you can do this one more okay you did that one now just one more if you can do one more then i won't push you anymore but you did one more can you do just one more look at that you did that you're amazing you're phenomenal you're great you are so strong the silent trainee hears that and they're like stfu fam like for why you doing that i just need you to tell me proper form so i can do this without injuring myself and how many reps i need to do to get ideal results Outside of that, Will you stifle yourself? the needs of the one are to hear they're the best trainee. The needs of the other are directions and space to execute different people, different relationships, different needs. And you can't meet the needs of one serving the needs of the other. Intimate relationship example. December needs constant compliments and reinforcement. January just needs kindness. You don't have to OD on compliments. Just don't be rude if you don't like it. You know, that type of thing. December needs accolades whenever they share. January shares simply to keep you abreast of what's going on and to make conversation. December needs lights off, missionary movement behind closed doors. January needs adventure. Different relationships, different needs. If you show up to your current relationship trying to be the partner that was desired in your previous relationship, you might as well have stayed. In the relationship with your ex because you're working hard to make them happy, not the person that you're with. <laughs> I know what I'm capable of. I ain't never had a problem. I know this is a game changer. Couple things, friend. Echo Buster loading. You may really have been a rock star at what you were doing, but here's the uncomfortable truth. You might have been with a partner or even multiple partners who didn't want to hurt your feelings. They made it work so that they could make y'all thing work. They liked most of what you had going on in other areas. And while that part wasn't really that satisfactory, they did it anyway. Like, yeah, I didn't love it. It was kind of whack, but I was able to, you know, like do the things to get the desired result for myself because I do love the rest of the things about this person. Too many of us don't know our partner's true satisfaction level because most of us are not having open and honest conversations. So we're not telling the truth about our dissatisfaction. Instead, we're finding ways to work around it, finding ways to satisfy ourselves. And some of us aren't even satisfied. We're pacified and allowing this person to think that they're the source of our satisfaction. Now, here you go, walking around beating your chest. The man up in this piece, King Kong ain't got shit. On me. You feel invincible, you're insufferable, and the only person really impressed with what you do is you alone. Because one, nobody never satisfied with that, but they liked you as an individual, so they made it work. Be ye not fooled, passionate, neither be ye so beguiled as to believe that I'm only referencing sex. I'm talking about overall satisfaction. Sex, cooking, cleaning, whatever the area, this new partner's not going to beat you in the head. This is the one who says... Uh, yeah, no, that did for me. They don't say it maliciously. They simply say it directly. And the intent is solely to advise, not to harm. Now what? Okay, let's do a different for instance. You can't buy flowers for somebody who's allergic to flowers and expect them to be excited. That partner that you were with for 10 years who was allergic to flowers, of course they would turn off whenever you bought them flowers because they knew that what was potentially coming along with those flowers was an allergy attack. Now you're in a new relationship. And this person loves flowers. And to them, that's one of the best gifts that you could give them. Don't have to be fancy. Could be supermarket daisies. And they would be so happy. But you're not going to get her any kind of flowers. You won't even pick a pineapple weed or a groundsel out of a sidewalk crack. Because the last person you were with, you got her flowers all the time. And she was resistant. And she complained. And she had an attitude about the flowers. She didn't appreciate that you were trying to do something nice for her. But your something nice was definitely sending her whole system into shock. You wanted her to be excited about something that doesn't excite her. But that same thing excites this next person. And you refuse to do it because of the ingratitude and ungraciousness of the previous partner. Then you still need to be with that partner because your actions serve their needs. You have to be aware of what each relationship needs. You have to be diligent in what you're doing in each relationship. You cannot come to the new relationship bringing all the old stuff 
and finally making corrections for the old complaints. Because at this point, unless your current partner has the same complaints, you're trying to make your ex happy. You're still looking in the rear view at the accident behind you, but because you're not paying attention to what's ahead of you, you're about to cause a whole other collision. Nah, passion. Like, some of what you're saying is making sense, but for real, like, I learned a lot from that last relationship, and a lot of what they said was true, so I'm doing this work for me. Beloved, if it don't apply, let it fly. Just make sure all your self-work includes your listening skills. If newbie doesn't take issue with it, let it be. If newbie does take issue with it, but oldie and anybody before oldie was good with it, you need to be listening to newbie because newbie is the one you're with now. This is the relationship you're supposed to be cultivating. Another thing to consider, just something to think about. Sometimes the person we're trying to make happy is the person that we were able to be in that relationship. We may have made changes since then. But how many are bold enough to admit that they made changes more as a social experiment than because they really wanted to? And I'm not saying that's everybody, but there's a few. Who's bold enough to admit that they made changes to see what they would get from the next person or situation if they behaved differently, but not because they really believed it was beneficial to themselves? Like I said, not many are willing to admit it. And not everybody made changes to be manipulative, but a great many made changes that they never really wanted to make. It may be better, but it doesn't make me happier. Y'all know that's why so many folks still eat things that disagree with everything but their taste buds and then complain about stomach and every other kind of pain. A lot of us are resistant to change. Either we like the way we've developed ourselves to this point or we're just comfortable doing what we've always done. So sometimes it seems easier to change relationships than to change the things about ourselves that we don't have a problem with, regardless of how it's impacting our partners. That's no good. In a previous relationship, you did what you wanted, you acted a fool, and that's why you were comfortable in that relationship. It's also why that relationship was terminated. That relationship ended for the very reasons you were satisfied, because you, you were the only, only, one, only one satisfied. satisfied. Now you're doing the things that your ex wanted, so you can say you weren't the problem in that relationship, but a new person don't want what your ex wanted, so you still the problem. And you're blaming everyone outside of you when you are the common denominator in your relationships with one, two, and you. I'm finna rock another boat right here and I might just tip the boat over, but I can swim, so. <laughs> if you know that you have a dominant personality, ask yourself if you're in a relationship because you're looking to grow in partnership or because you're looking to exert your leadership. Ask yourself if you're in a relationship because you're looking to grow in partnership or because you're looking to exert your leadership. Ask yourself if you're in a relationship because you're looking to grow in partnership or because you're looking to exert your leadership. Because I promise you, no matter how alpha your personality is, if you enter into a relationship trying to lead someone who isn't looking to be led, <laughs> you're going to be big sad leading an army of one. If you go into a relationship looking to lead someone, who has already been lost, got found, and sees that you don't know where you're going, you will be marching alone. If you're looking to lead someone where you want to go, and that's not where they want to go, you will always be in conflict. This applies to men and women. A lot of people have a lot to say on who's supposed to be in charge, and that's a major part of the problem. Everybody is fighting to be the one in charge. But two things about leadership that cannot be missed or misunderstood because if they are, you'll never flourish in a leadership position. You ready? A good leader. Not great. Not spectacular. Just good. A good leader has to know how to follow. You're not at a point in history where there was no example. Okay? You're not original man. Even if you had terrible examples all around you, you still had examples. You had someone showing you what not to do. But we're not going to live here today, okay? That's an episode unto itself. If you want an episode on leadership, drop leader in the comments and I got you. The second thing, a good leader knows how to do all the roles. They might not be an expert in all of them, but if push comes to shove, they can get the job done. I told you I used to be a store manager, right? I can remember countless times employees groaning and grumbling about my pay versus theirs. I have done and can do and some days have to do every job in this store. 
you're barely doing the two tasks that you get paid for and you think we should be getting paid the same? You can't follow instructions, but you want a leadership position? Now, circling that back to relationship, you can't do a fraction of what I can. And you think you're going to come into my established, smooth running, well-oiled life and start dictating and delegating changes to me when your own life is in chaos? Would you agree to that if the situation was reversed? So why would you think that I would concede to that? There's so many examples that I can give on this subject, but more examples aren't really going to make it clearer. The bottom line is you cannot show up as your ex-partner's dreamboat and try to sail with your new partner because that boat finna sink. Okay. The last conversation, we talked about people being somebody's lesson. This conversation, we're not talking about or even to the person who feels like they were left behind. Rather, we're talking to the person who did the leaving or the person who has moved on. You moved on. You're sailing different seas. Not every watercraft is for every body of water. Ensure you're on the best vessel for the waters you're in if you want optimal navigation. And if you're not sure what craft is best for these waters, research the waters. Ask questions. Don't be in such a hurry to fill in the blanks. Even if you think you know, ask them and give them a chance to answer. If their answer is shallow, they may never have given it much thought. Or they may never have been asked. Go deeper together. More people know what they don't want well before they know what they do want. Leave room for that. Don't assign them a want because it worked for someone else or just because it works for you. Assuming you know how to navigate an ocean because you've sailed on a lake could ultimately get you thrown overboard. I feel like I've covered enough for today. I got more to say in another episode. I don't know how this keeps extending. <laughs> I'm not saying you will or you won't get thrown away one way or another, right? I am saying work at being a good fit for the person that you're with instead of trying to be comparatively great or better to or for the person you were with. Stop listening to these people saying all men want, all women want. They can't speak for all people, even if they can speak for the majority of people they know. Because how many out of the 8 billion on the planet could they possibly be speaking for? When you use that measuring stick, that all dwindles down to some very quickly. Anyway, you get your right guru is late again and signing off. Event updates. The location is secured. The ticket link is live. The fundraising campaign is going live this week. The donation tab is live if you want to make a donation but don't want to buy a ticket. Or if you want to buy a ticket and make a donation, that option is available as well. I may be making adjustments to that tab as well, but... Nothing that'll preclude anyone from making donations in the meantime. We are looking for volunteers for the event. The volunteer tab on the ticket buying page is under construction, but we'll have all the spec but it will have all the specifics and be live by next week. We're 73 days away, y'all. My hands just started sweating. Let me go <laughs> before any other physiological occurrences take place. Y'all go forth, be great, be filled with bliss, be armed and empowered with knowledge. The best way to please your current partner is to know your current partner and do what works for y'all, not necessarily what worked in the past. And all things be passionate. See you later.